Hi, welcome to the Makerthon. Isn't this a great day? I've been having fun watching all the makers do their own things. I'm really uh, proud that I get to be here, a little bit nervous and excited, so let's just go right into this. My name's Linda and I'm with Remade with Love, and this is what I'd like to show you for my Makerthon time. Last year, I was working with about 23 seniors in high school, and I needed to come up with a way to really express to them how excited, proud, um, just you know, full of enthusiasm, a communication that would say, I know I haven't seen you in weeks, but yay, you did it, you graduated. So I looked around and I found Amy Howard stencils. And so I found a way to create graduation cards for my seniors. So this was my inspiration in looking at other products that Amy Howard had that I could possibly use to make other uplifting or inspirational cards for people. First thing I'm gonna show you is how to create a postcard with a stencil, some paint, and that's it really. So let's take you through this. It's really quick, really easy. It's the most simple one I can show you how to make. And I think you'll do, you'd enjoy it and anyone can do it. I went ahead and got some postcards, watercolor postcards from the craft store and just grab one out of the book and then take some one step paint. This happens to be American Dream. And it's a beautiful color when you first open it up. However, take a look inside. It does not look at all like how it dries. You look at this and you think, oh my gosh, that's so bright. But it really dries down to this beautiful, deep, rich, dark blue. And if you use a white, gel art ink on top of it, you can get your stencil to pop. So after you stir up the one step paint because you want to get all of the chalk paint mixed in, go ahead and take a sponge brush and thoroughly coat a layer on top. Notice how I don't really care how it's put on. I don't care about marks or, or you know, if it's even or not, I just want to get that paint on there. Like anything you do, uh, if you're using this on a piece of furniture, your first coat can be any which way. Go ahead and coat it. Because of timing, I want to go ahead and, and move on from here. But what I do want to tell you is when it gets down to the very end, you do want to smooth the paint out and have it go one direction as much as possible. Look at me, I got paint all over myself. I'm trying to hurry so fast. Um, one direction and as smooth of a stroke as possible. So although you put it on every which way, you will smooth that out, laying your brush about a 45 degree angle and pulling it across the top. What you'll need to do is let this dry. It takes about 15 minutes. I know it seems like it would take more, but it doesn't. Takes about 15 minutes, let that dry. It will uncurl as it dries. So you don't have to worry about that. And you'll get a beautiful, beautiful dark blue postcard, just like that. Next process would be to lay the gel art ink. And in this case, I'm using a white and it's called Well I Declare. And to do that, if you have not used Amy's stencils, Take the tri-mesh stencil of your choice. Find a spot where you'd like it to, to be. And I like using a brayer. A brayer is gonna push down the stencil onto your surface and eliminate air in there. And next, you're gonna squeeze your bottle. Just kind of make sure it's mixed up in case it's settled any. You wanna make sure that it's not going to come out a little bit thick and then a little bit thin and have an issue or a problem. Get a good amount on the tip and then just press it in. Now because this is gel art ink, it will dry eventually. You wanna make sure any mistakes are off or start another card if you make a big mistake. And that's okay, these things are so easy and quick to do. 
and so inexpensive, you'll love being able to make your own cards. So that's all really you need to do. Take your spreader, make sure it goes into a bath of water as soon as possible, and you'll do the same for your stencil. And notice how that came out. Beautiful. I love it. Let that dry a few hours. And because it is gel art ink on top of the paint, the paint would be fine, but I would go ahead and put a coat of either glaze or if you want it to be sealed and not worry about water in case it went through the mail and it was a rainy day, I'd put a layer of um, matte sealer on there. Just use a roller with a foam brush and want, run it right across the top. Okay, I'll close this up. Next item, let's move on. So you've got my inspiration, my first easy piece. I'm going to drop my foam brush in the sink. I want to get water on that as soon as possible. I want to try and reuse that brush again. And because I got a little bit of paint on the counter, excuse me for just a second while I get that off. Okay. All right. That's the final. Now the next piece over here that I'd like to show you takes a little bit more to it. Um, I used two stencils and this was a card that I created for two friends of mine who are retiring and they're going to travel the world. So what they've done is, or what I've done, is to stencil the top with her Explore stencil and then on the inside I took a page of an old passport because I thought that was kind of neat. Didn't have any travel stamps, but how neat would it be if you, if you were able to use one that did have a travel stamp? And then I also put the stencil that says, not all who wander are lost. Thought that was cute. To do this, you're going to do the same basic procedure. You'll take a card like I did, find an old passport, rip out a page. You're going to glue it on. Decide if you want to write on this page or the other page. Glue this to the one side, and I'm going to run you through this really quickly. I use these little tabs instead of glue stick. I hope you're getting some good tips today from watching the Makerthon. I'll tell you what worked for me and what didn't. And maybe you don't have to relive my experiences in making inspirational cards. All right, take those off. We'll get this on here. Okay. Decide where you're going to put that. And then this is easy peasy, right? Take your Explore stencil, run it on an angle because I liked that feeling. I use my brayer again, and in this case, I'm using Shut Your Mouth as the color. I'll hold this at a 45 degree angle and start spreading on there. It's really easy to do this when you've got a color underneath. You can see exactly if your ink is in the right place or not. And then I like to go back over and take some of this off. Okay. I'm wiping my, my spreader as I go. Great. All right, let's take a look. Oh, my finger just got a little smudge on. I might have to retouch this with a little bit of ink or decide if I'm going to just use another card. Sometimes those mistakes happen. Then on the inside, 
Once this is dry, I'd lay it out and do the same thing with the other stencil here on top of my passport page and then write to my friends on the other side. So because this is still wet, we'll just let that sit and you know the steps. My last piece that I wanted to show you is the most complicated and I hope you enjoy it as much as I did, but I decided what would I want to do if I had a friend and we actually have a great nephew who just had a baby and my husband and I are going to get a gift, cer uh, gift certificate, get a savings bond and tuck it into a card and send it to him and his wife for their new baby. And so what I decided to do is create a little blessed card. And so I'm going to show you how you can create this one that's a little more intricate than the other. So to do this, I have my card, which comes with an envelope. I just, again, bought it at the local craft store where I could get blank cards. This is not the watercolor type, but it is a heavier bond. Then I did get some ribbon there. And I thought I can do blue, so I do have some pretty blue. I have pink, but I also have some just generic, um, this sparkly, um, kind of a beige taupe color. And that's because I do have friends that say, don't make everything blue for boys and pink for girls. We're getting away from that. So I thought, how interesting. I wanna try and do the same thing and create something that can go to friends or families where gender doesn't matter. But we're celebrating the birth of that child. So what I did was I cut my ribbon a little bit longer than the piece. I'm going to go ahead and once I create it and stencil on it, then I'll cut it to size once I lay it down. Because it is, I want to get an idea of how much I'll need. Because it is something that you can push paint through, it's kind of like a mesh. What I did next was take a paper towel and put my ends around this so that when I stencil, I'm going to stencil on to the mesh and it will go through, soak through to the paper towel. Before I did that, however, I think it's important to get a surface that won't pick up all the glitter onto the back of your stencil. You want to be able to reuse that stencil over and over and we all know what glitter does. It sticks everywhere and is impossible to get rid of. So here's another tip. Take hairspray and go ahead and spray down the whole surface. Spray down the whole surface. Now this may darken the, um, the piece here, but that's okay. It takes a few minutes to dry and the stencil will not pick up the glitter on the back of it. That's what I'm impressed with. In this case, I used Amy Howard's Blessed stencil. She's got a couple of them, one in a really pretty script and this one, and I liked the simplicity of this. This is not done drying yet. It may not stick. I might have to let this dry. Hold on. It's getting there. So you're going to go ahead and lay it down. And then once again, use the brayer. Now I'm hurrying to show you what I've done in the amount of time in this amount of time I want you to take your time and seeing this I can tell you that the blust is not sticking to this with the wetness of the hairspray still on here so <laughs> we're gonna punt here um, I'm gonna show you that what I did next was I took my ink and in this case of the of this ribbon, the darker plain ribbon, not the blue, I used Blowing Up a Storm because I wanted something gentle and soft instead of a blue on a blue. Uh, I used Amy's Gel Art ink in, um, in the blue color, which is the Hush Your Mouth on the blue. And then I do have some red that I used on a pink ribbon, but I don't have an example here. So I am just going to let that sit and I'm going to show you how to make the card have dots on it. So here's the card 
and you know you're going to have the middle where we're having the ribbon. And so what I did next was take gilding size, make sure that's all mixed up, and then I looked through my junk drawer to find the pencil that had the hardest eraser on it, the petrified eraser that nobody uses anymore. And then I just started to make dots. Doesn't matter if they're little, doesn't matter if they're big. You just want to go ahead and dot the surface where the ribbon will not be at so that it looks like they're all over. Now, this will take a few minutes to dry or to come to tack. To come to tack, I mean when you take your finger and touch where you've made the dots, it's going to pull gently away from your finger. And when it's reached that consistency, you can put the gold leaf on it and burnish it, and it will stay and create the dots that I have on this piece. So I'm just gonna shake this a little bit. and go get some of my gold leaf. And if you've ever used gold leaf, you know how gently you need to use this. A slight breeze and you'll have gold leaf everywhere. So normally you keep it all covered by the tissue until it's time. Yeah, that's good. There's a few more that are a little bit more liquid I'm going to go ahead and show this to you. Oh, and I think it just tore on my finger. It did. Ha! That's okay. We're going to stick this on the edges, and if, it, if there's any gilding size on there, it will stick to it. So don't be afraid to reuse this. Don't be afraid to dot it some more and pick up some of the gold leaf that has fallen. It will all work really well. You can't, you can mess it up, but you can't. <laughs> you can always fix it. And this needs burnishing. In this case, I'm gonna use the brayer again. I love my brayer, but it sticks to it. You can also, I just take the booklet and place it on top and roll it down. Some people use popsicle sticks. Some people use their fingers to rub. Um, what you're trying to do is get a nice bond on there and then whatever comes off is not sticking with the size, the gilding medium. And then take a brush and burnish it away and you can see those dots start to come out. Don't worry if, if you've made a mess, you can take and scratch off. You can create more dots and go from there and this is what you'll end up with. A cute little blessed card. So, you've seen I've had a little bit of uh, trouble here, that's okay we can correct it and go on. We could decide to do something different with it. Maybe I burnish it and I go, you know what? I like the look of it painted along the edge. Feel free to, to just create and try things and don't be afraid to start over or just make it something new. I found success in creating cards that are inspirational and I hope you will too. Once again, please follow me at um, remade with love on YouTube or on Facebook. If you've got questions, if you have disasters and want to share them with me, I've shared a few with you of my disasters, a few disasters of mine with you. I want you feel, to feel free to share with me as well. Um, I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much, Amy. Bye-bye.